Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in the Armor Conservation Lab at the Metropolitan Museum of Art with Ted Hunter. Hello, sir. Hello. It may surprise you to learn that one quarter of all the bones in our bodies are actually in our hands. And the same or more is true for my favorite piece of armor, which is gauntlets. And Ted, you know, when we were having a phone call about this, I was yeah. saying, is there a possibility that I could touch a real period gauntlet? Because while I have made and drooled over thousands of pictures and made several of my own versions, I've never touched the real thing. Well, and there's just nothing quite like that, right? I agree. And the, the answer to your question is yes. Yes, I can touch these. You can touch these. Okay, can we walk me through this okay. amazing amalgamation we have? All right, so when you said you liked gauntlets, yeah. I started looking around in our gauntlet drawers. And I tried our to gauntlet drawers. Got a lot of gauntlets. <laughs> you know, I couldn't take anything off the armors that are on display. Sure. Right? So I, this is what's in storage, and I found kind of an interesting sample. Mm -hmm. um, they're all sort of within a 50, 60 year period of each other. This is really this is an early 16th century German mitten style gauntlet, Whoa. and it's pretty beefy, right? Holy really cow. heavy. Wow! It's cataloged as a bridal gauntlet, which is actually. Incorrect. That's an English thing from the Civil War. We think this is probably more of a, a manifer, like part of a tournament jousting like right, kind of thing. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, because I don't looks... think you could hold a weapon in your left, like a pole axe or something. Yeah. But you could hold the reins. Right. <laughs> you can't tell, but it's really heavy. No, it's really heavy. I mean, you can see the thumb. I mean, the, the, the beefiness of this thumb yeah. is You see the else. thumbnail? Oh, there is a thumbnail. <laughs> And I like the quality of the hammer work on the inside. I don't know if you saw that. You can really see. Oh, every tool strike. Every tool strike, yeah. Oh. And this, uh, the leather around the outside here, there would have been probably another a, bit of structure a in. A mitten, yep. Um, which we'll see one in the last gauntlet here. So you'll see what it is. But okay. these, these straps are riveted in mm -hmm. so that other linings and things can be sewn I to that. You so that they can be repaired and replaced as needed. And so the, typically when we get these today, all that's remaining is, is some leather like that. And it's not even always the original leather. I'm really impressed with the fact that of the two halves of, the, uh, of this part, that there's only a rivet at the top and the bottom. Right, well, right. if you look Col inside, you'll see the, the construction Oh, there's some blind there's some rivets. Hidden rivets. Yeah. Oh. And if you look closely, we might be able to see where one's been polished or ground out. But no, they're pretty well hidden. Wow. Sometimes you can spot it because they'll corrode preferentially right, right. around that. But they were pretty good at hiding these things. I know in the Wallace collection, I've seen so many bits of jousting armor that it's all about that like smooth. Yep. That smooth, not catching anything. Yep. That is incredible. Yeah, they have a great collection. How heavy that is. Okay, so that's German. German, yep. Okay. Okay, now this one you're really gonna like. This is this is a late, mid to late Italian, uh, 16th century. It's a dueling gauntlet. Turn it over, look at the palm. <gasps> that is so you can grab your opponent's rapier with your with your hand. Rather than expending yeah. your own blade and you know, as yeah. a defensive, you still have it as an offensive, you can grab your opponent's. No, but I mean, sword. I believe I've seen that in one of the sword fighting manuals. Yep, it's in the there manuals. is that, and I was like, how did they do that? That's how they this did that. This is how they did it. They had all these yeah. tiny chain mail. <gasps> and it's, as I said, it's sewn yep. to the glove, which is then sewn to the, the lining leather. That is incredible. And the number of finger lames is insane. Yeah, we counted just the finger lames I think there's 55 on here, plus then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine if you count that. So, you know, just the two gauntlets is more lames than the rest of the armor put together. 128 sure. <laughs> some odd pieces. Right. Yeah. Separate pieces that all end up going together. Because every one of these has a rivet in there holding it to the... Right. Wow. I also love when you look up close at the marks how... Everything's yeah, a little, a little wonky. bit wavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not. They might have scribed it out nice and straight, but then you got to go through and carve it out, and change uh, it a little bit. A fencing glove. Okay, now this gets. We get to some fancy. Yeah, this is getting really nice. So this is uh, back to Germany. Uh huh. This is uh, an earlier, uh, about fifteen thirty so or Ooh. something, exquisitely it's... made. But I also call your attention to this nice hook catch, which we can open and that's to make it easier to put on and off. It's also incredibly light. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, it flows really well. And we have the thumbnail again. Yeah. Oh, little oh thumbnail. An and these little raised knuckle bumps, you know, yeah. to, to add extra protection to those areas. Wow. And it's you can see how uh, delicately it's been um, acid etched and then gilt. And they were doing, they were using acid for those patterns. Yeah, yeah, you would you'd paint on a resist and you'd scrape it away. Or sometimes you would paint on the resist and dip the whole piece of steel. But it's all done with acid. Right. And and then the gilding the gilding is applied. It's a it's amalgam gilt. It's mercury and gold. You right. Fuse it on with heat. Really healthy stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love the armor's marks. That's amazing. Super important for us to research. You know, and track wh who's making what. Yeah. And you know, if you know who made it, and, and you can work out sort of where they made it, right? And then you can go in the archives and find out when they made it and how much they were paid for it. Because you can find the receipts. Oh, absolutely. Oh wow. Um, I'm curious about this hole here behind the thumb knuckle. Do we know? Well, that looks like old damage. Or, as sometimes is the case, uh, it looks like old damage that someone then used to put a rivet in there inappropriately. Oh. This has been rebuilt a little bit, this thumb, for example. Yeah. Uh, let me turn it around so the camera can see in there. That's not the original leather. Those are not the original rivets in there. You see the shanks on these are brass. Right, right. No, no. No, no. <laughs> we use steel steel rivets. Is there a reason? The, the brass is too soft. Oh, okay. Yeah. God, the movement on the slot there is really lovely. Oh, yeah, the slot. So you can get a little extra flex. And look, this whole thing, you can oh, sort of see wow. how it, it, it has moves a lot that of... way. So it's all to keep giving you as much motion for battle right. as you need. Exactly. And that stuff like that is why you needed someone to help you dress. Right. right, you're sitting there like oh, that, yeah. trying to. You thought it was hard to button your collar, right? Well, which it's, it is. It is. You got someone to do your all your little buckles. We have uh, one armor. It's got I think thirty or forty of those throughout. All over. Everything's clamps on and then hooks on with those. Super secure. Really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, okay, so that was German. German, Italian, Italian German. German. Is that Italian? Italian. I, I pulled it out just because um, I thought it was nice to kind of compare the. Uh, the difference between the the German one and the Italian one, yeah. the gilding and the etching slightly different, but the more or less the construction is about the same. But I like this nice flaring cuff. Yeah. And then, you know, this is how you would do the the leather inside. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I don't think this is the original leather, and you can see like it's not because right? there's because a, a bogus pen. bogus rivet, <laughs> and the fact that that's like tearing, uh, but it's. Uh, you know, it's in the right place, more or less, mm -hmm. right? But you mm -hmm. can see it's pretty tight, but there's some repairs, oh, sliding yeah. rivets yeah. again. Yeah. Um, but you can, you can have a look at that one up close. So you can see, oh, here's more, more modern washers there. Right. I'm really, I had no idea about the two rivets per lane. But I mean, they it tear makes out really sense. easily. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm sure it was a lot of, you know, repair work done. Particularly when you're in the field, you know, you'd have had to have an armor with you to fix these things. This makes me also wonder if, like, if armor knowledge didn't sometimes cross uh, borders, right? Like, armorers might not borrow techniques from each other. Oh, they absolutely did, but they also tried to hide them from each other. Ah. You know, your secret formula, how you're hardening your steel. Ah. You didn't want your competition in Toledo to know what you were doing in Milan. Right, right. What you were doing in Augsburg. Because, you know, if you were doing something really well... You wanted to sell armors. You didn't want, you, you wanted people from Italy to come up to, yeah. to Germany to come buy your armor instead of buying it locally. So, yeah. It's also really, I love that, the stylized curves. I love these flared curves so much. All right, now I saved the best one for last. For oh, me. really? I know you're gonna love this, okay. <laughs> uh, back to Germany. Back to Germany. This is early 16th. And this is what we call a locking gauntlet, okay? So, you don't want to drop your sword, do you? So no. you, Wrap the gauntlet around, and there's a yeah. spring catch. Click. Okay, so the pommel just has to be wider than that hole, and you can't drop it. All right, and then that, it, do be careful with this one, because this is all original leather lining yeah. in there, okay? Oh my so goodness. It, it's a spring catch, you just push down on that. You push and down it will open up, and it comes up. Oh, there you go. Wow. And you can see the mechanism in there. Oh, look at that, just a little, yep. Doesn't need much. No. 
It's actually pretty smooth for being hundreds of years old. Well, <laughs> we take good care of things. Right? Yeah. Oh, Again, thumbnail. thumbnail. <laughs> I'm impr- I had no idea the thumbnail. Also, I love the cup, the, the cup over the thumb. Right. You can, sometimes it'll just cup over the end of the thumb a little bit. And then this has also got a turning key, which allows that to open up to make it easier to get your hand in. Oh, wow. And then... Oh my goodness. The whole thing opens up like that. This is a lot of nice little technical refinements on this that make it fit really well and function really well. I I really love the, I mean, these are, I'm not imagining that these were regularly used in battle, like with the gilding on them. Are they? No, no. I mean, this kind of armor is fully protective. Yeah. Right? This is a piece of armor, but it is just as much a, a fashion statement. Right. It's like Rolexes tell time, yeah. <laughs> and they also tell you how wealthy you are, right? So this is the same kind of thing. If you were to go to the Prado and look at the portraits and so on, yeah. you'll see that's this is what they're wearing. They're wearing their armor, yeah. right? Yeah. That's how they're getting their portraits done because it shows off their wealth, their power, their their martial prowess. You know, they're they're part of the knightly class, right, that kind of right. thing. You need to demonstrate all those things. But I also love the lack of adornment on this. This is this is clearly like, yeah. this is the piece made for use. This one gets used, yeah. That is, I mean, and even just the refinement of this little buckle is yep. so gorgeous. Oh, it Close looks double. That. Yeah, there'd be a And there'd be pin. a pin. Yep. Yes. And fortunately that went right in, so then I'll turn that. And then we just click and... I didn't even know such a thing gone. existed. I guess later on during a celebration, you could also use that around your cup of mead. Well, I'd certainly by the third or fourth cup, I think that would be <laughs> that would be necessary. Right, yeah. don't want to drop it. Oh, and I I also really appreciate these edges. This is something that I don't see on right. any modern reproductions of armor. Is that beveled edge where the lambs meet is yeah. really particularly gorgeous. I also really like these the, that little wrist bone. Yes. Oh, right. You that often is- find. Let's see if any of the others have it. They don't always have it, but you often find it. No, nope, that's the only one on this that's group. That's really neat. So they're playing with the anatomy and... I like to think of this kind of thing as a as your portrait in steel in a lot of ways, right? Right. An armor that's made for you, yeah. right? You're going to have an armor made. Yeah, of course yeah. you are. When you're going to have it made, they're going to measure very personally. Yeah. <laughs> up close. And it's that armor's going to look like you when you're done. I remember right? reading the tag for Henry VIII's coronation armor when he was 18, and it's like it's one of the few times we know the precise dimensions of a right. British king because right. it covered every bit of him. We have two of Henry VIII's armors. Um, one when he's fairly young, and one it's his last field armor. And it's clearly the same oh. guy, <laughs> but, you know, years, 20, apart, years apart, 50, 60 pounds, oh. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> But you, you know, put them next to each other and you can really see the change in the body. But the stance, the broad shoulders and the, yeah. the posture is still there in the armor, which I think is, I mean, some of it's the mannequin, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah, right? no, I, but I'm a big, I love armor. armor stance. I yeah. love making them so that they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just that. I did one in my house whose stance is so martial that... Uh, he was scaring the crap out of us, and it wasn't wearing off. Come around the corner. Every time. So I have to push him <laughs> close to a wall, and just pushing him close to a wall makes you not take it seriously yeah. as a person. We've, you know, we'll have a mannequin out in here. We're working on something, and you'll come around from the forger. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. So five different portraits in steel yeah. across Italy and Germany in the 16th century. Et voila. Uh, Thank you. These yeah, are the first absolutely. five gauntlets I have ever yeah, touched. They're yeah. real, and th- what an amazing array. Dude, thank you, Ted. Yeah, absolutely. 